All right, so it's been a while since my last update, and I wanted to show you all what I've been working on. So as you can see, there's a fancy GUI um, that I actually did for a text-based uh, kind of tabletop role-playing generator that I made a while back. Um, and a couple of other folks did work, uh, worked on it with me and um, all that good stuff. So I thought, why can't I combine the two and make one that will generate characters randomly as well as allowing you to uh, make their appearance? So here's what we have. Um, as you can see, instead of the plain white background, we've got this fancy box. I will probably add some kind of button in one of the corners here that will allow you to make this all white if you want, because I think that would make things easier for exporting images, um, as opposed of, to having to edit out the fancy background. But once I eventually, probably years in the future, honestly, um, make it clean with like painted lines and painted skin tones and then I'll have to go through here and add colors. Oh god, I don't even want to think about it. But once I do that, it will look nicer without the white background, but while it's a sketch, it'll look nice with white. Um, as you can see, I'm still in the process of cleaning it up. I've cleaned up most of this body type, except for the chest and the... Uh, the face things still have some little, you know, stray pixels and whatnot. But I have fully moved over the body type and everything, so we can click uh, between various body types. You can see a lot more of this gross stuff that didn't matter when the background was white, but now that I've switched to a transparent background, it suddenly shows up. Um, I did add a new stomach to the wider body types because the weird, uh, the, just widening these old ones, um, that little dip looked very unnatural with the wider body types, and I like this stomach a lot better, and it also just makes them look more unique. Um, so right now I'm just working on the very first one. And I honestly should have waited to add this until I had completely finished cleaning up the type that uh, I call this body type A. And then A, B, C, D, and then E is the wide version of A. I honestly should have cleaned this one up perfectly before making the wide version so that I didn't have to do all of the editing and clean up twice. Uh, so I won't be adding the new F, G, and H until after I'm done cleaning up all of the base body types because I'm going to have to completely redo this. The hardest part of this has actually not been the art or the programming. It has been the cleaning up of <laughs> the freaking graphics, but I guess that's to be expected. Anyway, um, so for now, we have all of this stuff. And then we have, um, you know, instead of the previous one where there was just the left and right, so I have, like, the next button. And as you can see, there's some issues where I haven't totally fixed it for this new system. Because um, without the white background, I had to actually redo so that the base hip at the bottom, like the default hip, had to be the smallest one where before I had it as the middle one. Um, so that's on me, more or less. But I've been making progress, and I'm slowly cleaning up the little lines and stuff. Um, but as you can see, you still have the various hips, and then different waists, which again, I haven't cleaned up, um, and different arm positions and different chests. Now the chest has the most in raw numbers so far, so it will be important, um, these buttons. So these buttons will go from 
instead of just one over and one over, you can go directly to the middle or the one quarter mark or in eighths. So that way you don't have to scroll through really long uh, numbers. But sometimes they will be the same because I just use a dividing calculation and uh, if it's not an even number and it's not divisible by eights, obviously you aren't always going to get the same thing. And I'll eventually do some rounding system or whatever, but um, it just makes it nice if you, if there's a whole ton of different variety to go through, then you can easily get to what you need. Uh, another big thing that I am going to be adding, which we don't quite have yet, um, let's see here. I should have prepared this already, but I didn't, so that's on me. Got my art. So one thing, if we can ignore my random stuff here, is I'm going to be adding hair. Yes, you see it. There's like background hairs and then bangs. And that's the new stomachs I added. I haven't totally edited them in for each body type, so it looks a little, you know, it's just... But now you see, this is what I start with. I start with sketches, um, and I just trace over my old body types, and then I add the new whatever for each body type. So you can see this with the chest of the A type, or, well, E, technically, since it's wide. And then this will be the F and the uh, G and the H. Um, and then they also will have the other body types as well. Um, so as you can see, the stomachs on these look a bit different. So the other body types will also have more muscles, ideally. Um, and then also you can see that some of the, that the legs you pick will also affect the waist types available. So this is more of a hard fat situation, whereas these legs over here have more of a soft fat. Um, anyway, I still have a lot to clean up before this is finished. But uh, I will be adding hair, so the hair length is going to be the back of the hair. The hairline is going to be... Um, it's not actually the bangs, it's a layer under the bangs that just shows, you know, the hair looks pulled back and you can just see the, the hairline. The bangs are what we saw there. The forelock is going to be like a piece of hair that goes before the ears that you see in a lot of anime. Um, and then accent hair will be anything extra that I decide to add. Um, so, and of course, we still have the variety of face shapes, which I mildly regret adding some of these because some of them are different enough that I had to add extra everything for the ears and the hair and the everything, but that ship has sailed. I'll just keep that in mind for the future. I think this one, this one is the one that had to have variations on everything. Anyway, so... I haven't added a ton of variety, um, more for, like, noses and mouths and whatnot. I probably should add some more, and, and I likely will once I get some more of the stuff that I want done, done. I did add a few more eyes, um, just because I'm not sure if I added the eyes to this body type, but you can see some of them in the this one? No, well, whatever. I added a couple more eyes, wherever the heck they went. Um, and I don't know, I don't think I had this the last time, but I added some more humanoid ears, because before I just had the one set of humanoid ears, and then all of the animal ears, right? Which obviously need to be cleaned up, because wow, there's like stray pixels everywhere. But, I've added some more human 
sphenoid ears. So we've got some slightly pointed ears in various directions. So you can make elves and halflings and, you know, everything of that assortment. Um, in addition to all of the cute little animal ears that need to be cleaned up. And let's see. So eventually you will be able to use this button to re-roll a totally new character. Um, so it'll generate everything randomly for you, and then you can quickly get new characters, right? This will be the button used to save the character on the image. So ideally, it's going to just take a screenshot of this character within the frame. And then I'm thinking for these other things, it'll export like a text document. This is just the button to exit, and I'm thinking I'm going to add like another one that's like question mark where you can look at options and preferences and stuff. Um, I might add voiced things later uh, for vision impaired folks who are looking at the game that will just like explain what different things and then read stuff aloud. I'm not entirely confident in my ability to do that, but I would like to, um, and at least I can do it for some of the um, the stuff that text readers, uh, screen readers wouldn't be able to read, like, all of this, um, text on the screen here is not text, but actually images, um, so I would want that to be voiced for sure, because otherwise, like, you just can't use the program, and I don't want to do that. Um, so these buttons currently are non-functional. But when I add the randomization aspect, once I've finished cleaning up all of this um, nonsense that I'm doing to myself, um, let's see. Once I finish that up, this will be gender and sexuality. Uh, I just made that symbol up, honestly, because I need something that would fit inside of a circle instead of outside, because Otherwise, it, it looked funny in a box. So I was just like, cool, we'll just combine the male-female symbol and put it inside the circle. And this will be the gender and sexuality page. And that's going to be based off of the uh, role table that I made for making my own NPCs, which was inspired by the fact that I, I'm trans and I play tabletop games with a lot of cis men. And they tend to just make all the NPCs dudes, um, unless I complain about it. So I was like, here, here's a random generation table. When you're making NPCs, you can occasionally have queers. I did the work for you. Um, this is, I did research on some of it, like, but some of it, honestly, I just made up. I don't remember which was which I made this years ago. Um, but it generates assigned sex and then gender identity, whether you're cis or trans. Um, and then, like, whether your gender uh, expression reflects your identity. It gives you a style, which I made based on Pokemon, because, uh, like, Pokemon fashion settings, because I was GMing a Pokemon campaign at the time, and I wanted to make my co Pokemon campaign super gay, because I'm super gay. And then if you're trans, whether you're binary or non-binary, then if you're non-binary, whether your gender is stable or fluid, and then if you have a uh, fluid gender or like multiple genders or whatever, then you can roll for here. Actually, I think you just roll this always. And then if it's fluid, you just pick more than one or something. Anyway. Um, and then you also get to choose who you're attracted to, whether you're monosexual or polysexual, um, meaning you're attracted to only one gender or multiple genders, and then whether your romantic orientation is matching your sexual orientation or whether they're different. Um, for example, like asexual people have being romantically attracted to somebody like men and sexually attracted to nobody, or whatever. And then also relationship orientation, so like monogamy and 
polyamory and stuff. So that will all be eventually included in this button, but um, a lot of it is going to be invisible. So what I'm going to code in is that the assigned sex and the gender identity, depending on different combinations, it'll assign a keyword. And then those keywords could also affect the pool of body types that get randomly generated. So if you're cis female or if you're cis male, you won't end up with one of my 20 plus types of breasts. <laughs> and if you're trans or intersex, then there will be different variations there. Um, and then let's see, in this little brain icon is when I'm going to have a generated um, random personality traits, basically. So we play Heavy Gear, and Heavy Gear has kind of a personality trait table. And I'm going to make something similar, um, that it will just give you some basic things about a person, so that you have two or three traits that you can just go with if you're making an NPC, like whether they're shy or particularly arrogant or pious or whatever, bad with money, just random things that could be ways to describe who they are as a person. Falls in love at the drop of a hat, whatever. And then this little clock timeline thing will give a few background traits, um, like, I don't know, some common events that could have happened in their life. I'm not entirely sure about what I'll do with that, because it does kind of depend on setting, but I'm assuming just some generic things, and eh, you can take it or leave it. Uh, once I have all of this done, I'm going to make each of these things buttons, so the body type will be a button, and you can just click on each button, and it will re-roll just that one thing randomly. So if you like everything about the randomly rolled character, except you really hate their nose, you just click the nose button, and it will give you a random new nose instead of you having to pick. But you will also be able to just left, right, and middle your way through and browse the noses. But if you're lazy and you just want to re-roll it and you don't want to have to do work or whatever, you can just click, right? And yeah, that's it. This is definitely an ambitious project, and I've taken on a lot, but I'm having fun with it, so I'm not sweating it too much. I don't put any strict deadlines on myself. I'm disabled, so sometimes I'm sick and I can't work on it, but I'm just going through as I can. I hope you enjoyed this explanation of my random NPC generator, because I am lazy and I'm going to put a quest system in my game, and I don't want to have to draw everybody from scratch, but I also don't want everybody looking the same. Thank you.